Hello my friends, how are you today? This is Tamir show. And today, we are going to talk on a new subject. Because lately, you know me, I was, uh, I started my way on YouTube, let's say, at least. As a, as a digital piano reviewer, sort of. I started a journey and in my journey I was going over more than 20 pianos at least and at the end I found myself going back to Kawaii There is a new keyboard, let's say, to Yamaha. Yamaha just uh, replaced the P125 and the P45 on the two new models, which code 145, which is replacing the 45, I guess. And the 225. Or 245, I don't know, which is replacing the 125A. And there is a two good news about these instruments. At, at last, Yamaha did replace the key action, and, and the key action uh, of the P125, which, which was the GHS. It was also on my Modix 8. The, this is a, this action was, a, it felt good, but after playing it for half an hour, hour, your hand was aching. My hand was aching. And the, this is a, the problem that I was having with it. It wasn't a comfortable. Yamaha have a, a heavy action, I think. On the other, the better action. The, D, the GHS is not heavy, but there is a problem with it that after, after you are playing with it, and they change it to GHC. So they change the action at last. So I hope it's a better action, which is not fatiguing the hand. And this is the first thing, and uh, the change on the higher model, on the replacement of the P125, which I do not remember the name. Let me check to be sure. Yes, it's 225. At the 145, I guess. So um, it's add 100 to the previous model. So the, one, the 125 became 225 and the 45 became 145. This is the two new models. And as you know me, even though they are better than the last, the 225, now got, um, now it's got the CFX model, the CFX piano, which you've got it on the P515 also. But on the P515, you've got also the Bosendorfer. And here they gave you only the CFX sample set, which is nice also. I like the Bosendorfer better, but it's nice also. And, uh, they changed the speaker configuration, I think, to the worst because now it's not in front of you. It's in, in the back like the Casio. And still with 7 watt only per side. So 
they can't compare with uh, Roland and uh, Roland uh, FP30X or the Kawai ES120, which both of them have 10 watts and more, 10 and 11 watts. Uh, so the Yamaha is the, is, is uh, in fact today, it's the most weak speakers because Casio have two eight watts uh, facing uh, forward. Yamaha have two seven watts fa facing forward. And uh, Roland and Kawai have two, Kawai have two ten watts and uh, Roland have two eleven watts or the opposite, no. Yes, Roland have two 11 watts. They are facing down, but there is a sort of a little port. Also on the Casio and the Yamaha has a little port here in the keys and the Roland and the... But anyway, I think that the, the speaker facing down are better than the, the speakers facing uh, in the opposite way of the player to the, let's say, the audience. Uh, if it's a bouncing a wall, it's maybe it's, it's, it, will, it will come back from the wall so the player will enjoy it more. But anyway, I think that the speaker configuration of Yamaha on the P125 and the P45, which was here, like my Kawaii ES8 now, I have the Roland FP30X. So if you want to compare it to another instrument, there is an advantage over the Kawai, but not the Roland, is the audio interface that the Yamaha put on both of these instruments. So this is the advantage over Casio and over Kawai. Casio, I'm talking the the, um, um, what's the name, S3000, S11, 1100 and S3100, PXS, yes. Both of them that do not have um, audio interface, just MIDI from the USB. But Roland got it, got it all. Roland got it all. And Roland and Yamaha, in fact, are uh, playing the same game. They are giving you audio interface and good pianos. I think that the CFX of Yamaha sound better than the Roland, but I'm not sure. You need to see the comparison. I don't have these uh, instruments here. But I think this is the case. I like the Yamaha piano better than, but the Roland piano is the, supposed to be the, the um, Stanway D from the New York Stanway D. I like it, but uh, I do like the Japanese piano better. It depends on the one because lately I'm recording uh, on a, on a, a soft piano from a soft Model D, Hamburg Model D, um, sample of course, and it's it's magnificent. Let's listen to it. But this is a big advantage that Yamaha is giving you uh, on their new instruments. And by the way, and they've got the VRM. VRM is virtual model uh, 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 modeling. Uh, Resonance modeling, I'm sorry, virtual uh, resonance modeling, which is uh, in fact string resonance, which is this, when I'm pushing uh, an accord, you can hear there is a tray, let's, uh, let's boost it a little bit here. And all the companies except Yamaha already have it, like Roland and Casio, and of course Kawai. You see, this is string resonance. And why it's called virtual? Because in sampling, you are sampling a note, you are recording a piano. 
but this resonance, it's a computer-based thing because it's, it's checking which notes are pressed and then it decides if to put the extra sound to your playing or not. And this is based of, of uh, computering, let's say. You see, I'm, I'm now pressing A minor on my left hand. And now I'm pressing F sharp, and there isn't any resonance. But if I will press the A, I don't know if you can hear it. You can hear the notice giving a little bit. So this is virtual. This is the string resonance you cannot sample. There is a way to sample, but it's very complicated. So it's a layer of modeling above. And you've got it also on the Casio and also on the other uh, companies. There is a guy which is pretty new be pianist. And he's doing the videos like this. And uh, he's claiming that the P125 have a virtual a string resonance. I'm sorry to tell you, he doesn't know what he's talking about. And I saw one of his videos too, which is trying to prove, but he doesn't know even what is string resonance. So anyway, all of the Yamaha pianos, digital pianos, almost all of them do not have string resonance. Okay, I used to have the Mod X8. Of course, it's got uh, the 670, the, the Ranger type uh, piano, which are of, you know, uh, old people and the uh, organists and things like that. And of course, this instrument do not have string resonance. If the, even the CP88 and the YC88 does not have string resonance on Yamaha. And even the montage and the Modix 8 does not have string resonance on Yamaha. But the P125A, they, they bring the string resonance, which is the VRM, which this guy does not know what is VRM. So the VRM is the virtual resonance modeling. This is the, the feature that I just show you on my Kawai. So this is the feature now, now Yamaha put it on the P series, it, they already got it on the P515 because the F P515 have the engine from the Clavinova series, from the CLP series and all of this. I used to have the CLP535, so I know that Yamaha got it, but not on the uh, portable line, except the P515 and the P125A used to have it, they added it, and now, it is also on the new P225. Okay, so this technology is there. I don't think it's on the P145, but I'm not sure I, I need to see the specs. But anyway, on the 225 there is, and there is the CFX. So the piano sounds on the new P225 are better. The main piano, let's say. The amount of sound is similar to the P125. Uh, and uh, it's, it's more sound natural because of this VRM, the, the, the resonances. The key of noise, the resonances engine is, is complex of several, uh, several things, not just the string resonance, but the string resonance is the main, uh, the main thing. There are more uh, even, there are more samples, like the samples of the, of the, the key of noise and the, and things like that, I guess that Yamaha put them also. Because the P125 was also, uh, only a sample keyboard. What is sample keyboard? When you are pushing a note, you are hearing a piano that someone recorded. Okay, like here, this is also sample piano. But here you've got the, this resonance modeling uh, engine.
So do I recommend this P225 or the 145? Well, I can tell you that uh, I do recommend the Roland better uh, and the Kawai better because unless you want to use this, the internal speakers of the... But it's only 7 watts, so what are you missing? And it's not even in front of you. I would go with Kawai and Roland and Casio maybe not. Like if it's Yamaha versus Casio, I will go with Yamaha, I guess. But I need to check the action of Yamaha, the new action, because the old action, the GHS, which this guy, this guy is a fanboy of Yamaha, and he is playing the GHS. And you can see that this guy didn't play any other keyboard, a professional keyboard, but... Uh, um, but anyway, um, this is the story of Yamaha. Yamaha is getting better, but it's not in par with the other companies, especially not in par with Kawai, of course, but even with Roland. And uh, not, I'm talking about the portable line, like the P225, the new one. The new one is in par on the piano side, but not the speaker side, I guess. Even Yamaha is a manufacturer of speakers, but uh, they went with the, and you know me, the, the ones that knows me, I used to have the Casio uh, PXS uh, 1100 and the 3000. And I loved this piano, but the speakers, which was pretty nice, but it's not on the level of speakers that facing down and because it's facing there, the, the shape is a ellipse. It's not a round speaker. So the bass is not the same. The, 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 the sound is not the same. Like two round speakers that, that uh, is forward down. This is my experience anyway with this uh, piano. So I loved the, the Roland and of course the Kawai speakers better than the Casio. And the Casio are 8 watts per side and the Yamaha is 7 watts per side. And the Yamaha on the P125, there was a tweeter and speakers in front of you so you were hearing, even it was 2, 7 watts like the Kawai ES110, but it was in front of you so the sound was good. But now it's in front of the back, so I don't know. I need to hear it because Yamaha is a very good uh, uh, speaker manufacturer, so uh, let's say high-end uh, amplifier manufacturer, so uh, I cannot judge without listening myself. But of course it's not, I guess it's not the same level as 210 speakers or 11 speakers like Kawai and the Kawai ES120 or the Roland FP30X. So it's not comparable. But if you are a fanboy of the Yamaha and to add the, the new features is the Bluetooth audio and the to the P225, the, maybe the both of them, the Bluetooth. I don't know what to tell you. Anyway, the audio interface is a good uh, is a good uh, uh, addition to both of them because the 45 didn't have Bluetooth and also the 125 didn't have any Bluetooth. So now there is sort of audio in through cable. So this is nice addition and Yamaha gotten better, but still they are behind Kawai and Roland. Kawai are the best sound-wise and action-wise, and the feel of Kawai is heavenly. So, but uh, Roland also good. I I I'm, I I have Roland. If if you saw videos of mine, it's on my mother's house. This I have there also a studio. When I'm coming there, so I'm playing with my band, which are my brothers. So I'm keeping the FP30X there and. 
why I choose the FP30X there, because with the FP30X I can come with the computer and play with the sound from the computer, not just the pianos on the FP30X, which I like, but not in the level of the Kawai or the, the VST piano. So this is very good. And Yamaha is giving you this too. But the left right is only on the P225 and not the P145. So the P145 is uh, in this matter, is less professional for, uh, for professional musicians that need the left and right and the speakers, you know. The, the, the proper out, not uh, to use with the uh, headphone uh, external uh, out. So, um, Anyway, this is my uh, quick, quick uh, opinion about these uh, pianos. And I'm inviting you all to, because piano is not, uh, most of the people are not understanding this. Uh, in this uh, I'm, lately, I'm not doing uh, reviews anymore because from my side, I found out that the action is the most important thing and the, there is no, there isn't any uh, company today that can compare with Kawai. Nor the action or the, the piano sound. So if, if you are asking me, I will go only with Kawai ES 120 because at the end, the piano sound and the action is more important than the audio interface, I have to admit. It's more important. And there is nothing that can compare to Kawai sounds or action. And if you are watching me closely, you know I, I had much more expensive pianos at my disposal. And I, did, I used to work on a studio with the P125. Uh, which was nice, but uh, the pianos is very bright and uh, there isn't the piano engine, let's say, the VRM that now they added. And uh, the action was problematic. If you are playing more than uh, one hour, you cannot play it. Your hand will kill you. It's killing the hand. The P125. Now the new action, I don't know how it is, because Yamaha always got uh, bad reviews on their action, which is heavy and not, uh, except some, uh, you know, newbies that uh, do, do not know the difference between a good action and a bad action, and they are, uh, uh, you know, fanboys of Yamaha just because it's Yamaha. But, uh, and Yamaha is a great company. I started with Yamaha. The P535 that I had was an amazing piano, but on Yamaha, the problem with Yamaha is that on the lower level pianos, they are chipping with the client. The action is much worse than the other companies. And the, the technology inside under the hood, let's say, is less than the other companies, but they improve it. Now it's the same a technology, at least, in the piano side, like the other companies, because Casio also have uh, uh, string resonance, and also, of course, uh, Roland and Kawai, of course. Roland does not have something, one sound, I, I figure it out, that they do not have the sample of the sustain pedal, the sound, you know, the ch -ch -ch. this sound. Here you can hear it very low. But still, if you are with headphones, good headphones, you can hear it. And I can bring it up if I want. Here you can do everything you want. This is a near damper noise. Now I put it on maximum. Yes, this, this effect you don't have on Roland. I don't know why, but you don't have on the 
FP30X anyway, and on, also on the 60X, on the RD88 I didn't try, so I played it, but I didn't try to listen, I mean. But uh, th this is something that Roland missed, the damper noise anyway. Yamaha, I guess, got it, but I'm not sure. I need to listen. But it's not a big deal. The big deal, the more big deal is the string resonance and the, the, the damper, the, the, the noises of the armor and things like that, which now I guess Yamaha got, but uh, at the not far past, on the P125 anyway, they didn't have. And also on the... Uh, Mod X8, as I told you, or the montage, or the CP88, or the YC88, all of these professional gigging pianos, they do not have this VRM, the virtual resonance modeling, and I don't know why. They put it only on their uh, flagship pianos lines, and their home digital piano lines. I guess not on all of them, but on the CLP and above, I know there is this engine and on the P515 which got the same engine as my CLP535 which now it's the seven it's to the generation after but it's got the same I played on the P515 it's got the same engine as the Clavinova series so it's amazing but now on the P225 they brought from this line the CFX, which is amazing piano, I have to say, and it's much better than the CF or the CF3, whichever they, the Yamaha got before, which are more bright pianos. Yamaha are getting more mellow like the other companies, a little bit, and uh, this is a good sign because the industry, the industry of the acoustic piano is going to the mellow side. And if you know, uh, most of the classical pianists are preferring mellow pianos than, uh, than uh, bright pianos. Only pop music is using uh, bright pianos, and today no one doing pop anyway. So today the most popular piano on Spotify, if you're going to a piano list, playlist is uh, felt pianos, which are more mellow than everything. And uh, uh, sadly, none of these companies are putting uh, felt pianos on these keyboards. Yamaha put it on the CL, on the CP and the YC, but uh, but not on the other uh, uh, pianos. And as I told you, these pianos do not have VRM. They not have virtual resonance modeling. I'm talking about the CP and the YC and the montage and the and the Mod X8. Okay, so this is a, this is the situation with Yamaha. So do I recommend to buy Yamaha? No. Do I recommend to buy the P515? Yes. It's got a marvelous sound, but the action is too heavy. It's 80 grams. A real piano is 55 grams. This piano in front of me is 55 grams on the middle C, like a real piano. I'm talking about the weight. Yamaha, as a tradition, have heavy action. Much more heavy than a real piano. I don't know why they are doing this, because they are manufacturers of real pianos, you know. They and Kawai are the only uh, digital piano manufacturer that manufacture also uh, Acoustic piano, all the other companies are just making digital piano like Ronald, uh, Roland, or Casio, or whatever. So, um, or Nord, or whatever company, but the only companies that making a real action of pianos are Yamaha and Kawai. And Kawai is doing very precise work on the digital pianos, which feels great just like an acoustic one, and I'm playing an acoustic piano, so I know. And uh, Roland feels good. It feels more heavy than Kawai a little bit, but it's not a big deal. But Yamaha feels good, very good, but it's heavy. 
so it's fatiguing. <laughs> so the action size, from the action perspective, Yama is it's problematic. I hope that the new action is more accurate, more similar to a real piano, the new uh, GHC, not the GHS. The, DH, the GHS, as I told you, I had the Mod X8, and it was killing me. After 40 minutes of playing, I have to make a break for one hour just to relieve the pain from the hand. Okay? And uh, there is this uh, phenomena also on uh, some of the keyboards, the cheap keyboards of Studio Logic, of Fatar, by the way. There is a very heavy action there on the chip, the SL Studio, SL88 Studio also. And some of the Dexibel, the Dexibel with the speakers have the, the heavy action of Fatar, which is killing the hands. So you need to check it. If you are going to a store and you are playing a Yamaha, a Dexibel, a, the SL88, you will enjoy it because you are playing 10 minutes, 20 minutes. You are not playing one hour every day. But if you stay there and you will play one hour, you will need, <laughs> you won't buy these instruments, okay? So this is a fact, you know, and I used to have, you want the, the list of my pianos? I will give you the P535, the CLP535 from Yamaha. Afterwards, I've got the Roland the RD800. Afterwards, I've got the Kawai, MP7, afterwards the Kawai F57 SE, afterwards I bought the Kawai ES110, afterwards I bought even the Alessis Prestige Artist, afterwards I bought the Casio PXS3000 and the 1100, and afterwards I got the Core Grand Stage, and I got the Mod X8, the Yamaha Mod X8 with the, GH, with the horrible GHS, action which I sold because of the action because my hand I could not play it I'm playing two hours a day at least and with Yamaha it's impossible you have to remember it yes and afterwards I've got the uh, I've got the FP30X and I've got this one the ES8 and this is the the pianos that I'm going I did my work on the piano garden, let's say. I did my work. I did my share. I have my YouTube channel. I have many, many reviews. Also on uh, virtual uh, pianos, but mainly on, uh, on uh, digital pianos and some uh, acoustic pianos. But anyway, I, I was more focused on uh, digital pianos because I was looking for the best one. And my conclusion is, Do not touch anything but Kawai. Kawai is not expensive. The Ama and the Roland are even more expensive than Kawai. And Kawai are the best. By far, at all parameters. Speakers, action, sound. Except one parameter. The audio interface which Roland and Yamaha have, and uh, Kawai do not have. And uh, Roland is better on the other sounds, except the pianos. I cannot say better, but more sounds, more options. They've got 55 or 56 sounds on my FP30X, which all of them are super natural, so they are uh, the best sampling engine from Roland. Okay, on the RD, on the FP30X, I'm sorry. So the FP30X is a good deal if you have it on a, on a, on a good uh, deal on money, I, I mean. But anyway, now today, if I would have the chance between the Roland or the Kawai ES120, I would go with the Kawai ES120 without hesitating. Even though I already have a kawaii. The reason that I bought Roland because I didn't want two kawaii's to 
the same pianos here and there. And I, I wanted to, you know, to, to diverse myself. But anyway, after checking so many companies, playing on so many pianos, the Kawai is the best company for digital piano today, period. Except maybe Nord. But Nord is a... Uh, It's very expensive uh, company. It's not, it's not worth it. And to my opinion, on the kawaii, on the piano side, uh, side, they are not better than kawaii. They have more features. It's, it's a sort of a... It depends which node you are getting, but... Yes, if you want... Uh, if you are a node fan, because most of the professionals are node fan, you know, and... Uh, I played some nords on uh, on uh, the on the story on uh, Israel and the sounds are marvelous okay the the piano sounds there and the, but I don't think it's worth the money you know I don't think it's better than my uh, core grand stage or the core v2 or and it's much more expensive or even the kawaii uh, mp11 SC or the Of course, the MP7 is the... I think as a professional gigging piano, you know, the MP7 is the best a, a, a price-wise versus what you are getting. Of course, I wouldn't touch Yamaha, even on the CP or the YC or the new series. I don't remember the name of this new series, which have the GHS action. God forbid... You know, the GHS action is a horrible action. Unless you are playing 10 or 20 minutes a day. If you are a professional or playing a lot, do not get near to the GHS. Unless you don't know any other action. Because maybe if I would play it half a year or one year, my hand will get used to this uh, heaviness and uh, it will ache less, but... I would not rule my uh, uh, I would not burn my hand for to get used to this action. So anyway, I'm glad that uh, uh, Yamaha themselves uh, got rid from uh, this action at last. Because I played also the P515. You can see it's two Arison uh, uh, review on the P515 versus the ES920. And Listen what he's saying about the action of Yamaha. He's saying this is very, very heavy action. And it's killing the hand. This is a, this is a fact, you know. You cannot argue with this fact. They, they was using, uh, uh, you know, a uh, weight uh, um, to, to weight the, the, the action. The Kawai is the most, also Roland, but Kawai is the most accurate, like a real piano. So anyway, my feeling about Yamaha, the new Yamahas, they are going up from what there was, definitely. At last they put uh, 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 the resonance modeling on their piano, uh, which it's time. <laughs> All the other companies have it long time ago and also they got it on the P125S don't listen to this newbie he doesn't understand in these things he also although you can see his passion and everything and he's trying to you know to cancel <laughs> to cancel me me? you are canceling me? <laughs> but He's a good guy, and he loves Yamaha, and this is his first piano, you know, and he's uh, very enthusiastic about Yamaha. And it's natural, everyone is a fanboy of what he has. But for me, I used to have every company, also Yamaha. I used to get, in, get them all, except Nord. I've got all the companies, all of them. And uh, on the flagship instruments and on the... you know, uh, starter instruments. So I know my shit better than this guy. I'm promising you. And he doesn't know even how to check uh, 
the string resonance. I saw how he checked it, them. It's not the way I'm checking them, or they are, they, it is the real truth. So he, never mind, I do not want to talk bad about someone else. But anyway, this is the story of Yamaha. And uh, but they are on the a good direction up. They are starting to get their shit together, let's say. And this is a good sign. Because if the let's say if the action was good on Yamaha and they was putting the VRM, the, the virtual resonance modeling engine on their flagship pianos like the CP88 or the YC88, let's say, I would buy this instrument because I like, I liked the sound of the modics, it, the pianos and everything, but you can hear that there isn't this, uh, you know, the resonance engine. Even if there were perfect action and perf and all the engines of the piano, still the Kawai piano sounds better than Yamaha. So anyway, Kawai is better than Yamaha. So th- there isn't any comparison. But Yamaha have a good sound, you know, and they are famous company. And I start with Yamaha, so I remember... Uh, I'm remembering them um, for good, let's say. And, uh, but they need to step up. They need to be better than the other companies, not less. They had to have better action than the other companies. They have to have better pianos, better everything. Stronger speakers than the other pianos. They have to, uh, to, uh, to upgrade the game because they are the most famous company of today. They are the best. They are not the best. They are the most recognized and, uh, uh, let's say, a uh, luxury uh, company because Yamaha is keeping their worth with time. I used to have an old Yamaha to my daughter and I sold it, sold it like this. They, are, they have good market, but they are shitty pianos. This is the problem. Because people, most of the people that, I, that buy pianos do not understand on these things. So, you know, they need the name. It's like Mazda, you know, Yamaha. Yamaha, oh, Yamaha, yes, Yamaha is the best. And the teacher is telling him, buy Yamaha. Because the teachers do not understand on these topics. They do not know what is under the hood. Yamaha, you know, because they, let's say on the upright pianos, the Yamaha U1 and U3 are the most famous and the most expensive and they, they, they are keeping their price for a long time. So people have good, Yamaha have a good name, especially on acoustic pianos. So, and teacher know this. Even though, it, also on the upright and the, the grand pianos, Kawaii is better than Yamaha, to my opinion, and the opinion of the most reviewers of acoustic pianos. Kawai sounds better, more mellow, the, 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 the fiber action, the, the, you know, the plastic action they've got on their, on their pianos. They, I don't know how they call it, I forgot the name, but Kawai is better than Yamaha, but Yamaha have better name, better value keeping than Kawai. And this is an advantage because you can buy Kawai, which is better than Yamaha, at a cheaper price than Yamaha. So if you are for business, buy Yamaha. For pleasure, for enjoyment, on a more quality piano sounds and more quality action and more quality everything, buy Kawai. 
anyway, my, uh, uh, let's say, my list is like this. Kawhi is the number one. After them, Roland. After Roland, Yama. And after Yama, Casio. On the entry level pianos, and I'm not talking uh, on the PE145, which is not entry level. I wouldn't touch this cheap pianos. Also the Roland, the FP10, I wouldn't touch this piano. Only the FP30X and above, or the Yamaha, the P225 and above. Or a, a, a Kawai is, the, they are starting from the level, they are not giving a junk piano, they are giving the, the ES120, which is the level of these pianos, okay? They do not have a cheaper piano to to compete with the P45 or the FP10. Kawai have standard. And the sampling of Kawai, they are sampling each, each note. The other companies is not. Kawai have 88 samples at the four or five uh, levels. The other companies are stretching notes. So if you are... If they are sampling, let's say, the C, the next sample so they can save some space on it. <laughs> Even though today it's, it's, it's not money, I don't know why they are doing it. So they will sample every three or four notes, and they, they will stretch. Also Roland, yes? All the other companies except Kawai. And Dexibel is the only company that is, uh, no, also my Kawai ES8, that is sampling almost all the length of the note. Like this one, you are hearing it, the other companies are looping after a point, they start to loop. Here you are getting almost all of the length of the recording. And there is a company that no one knows about and it's sampling all the length of the of the piano and they have a Hamburg uh, Stanway D and I play it on a store and I was very enjoying it and it's very cheap company I don't know about the action of it and they've got 220 watt speakers and they cost on like this and it's called Giwa Gewa Geva Okay, it's a German company, it's called Geva, and it's the name of the instrument, it's PP3. And this company, I'm going to buy this piano, and this company I played on, uh, on the uh, console uh, piano, home piano, and I very enjoyed the, the piano sound. It's very warm, and uh, they are claiming to record full sample of the piano like all the length of a piano, and they are bringing you the full samples of the piano from their starter piano, from this PP3, and above until their flagship. And this is one of the things that I love on Kawai, but they are uh, exceed Kawai on this point, because they are bringing you on their basic piano the full sample of uh, Stanway D. And I heard the sound, they are good, but it's non-familiar company, and they are using a fatar action on most of them, uh, of their uh, pianos. The piano that I played was with fatar, and it was good, by the way, I enjoyed it. But this PP3, the Giwa PP3, have a... Have uh, action that Giwa is manufacturing and not Fatar. This is what they are claiming on their site anyway. And uh, so, but I'm, I'm I'm thinking about buying this one, and uh, because I very enjoyed to play it on the store, and I was amazed to hear the, hear the sound from this uh, pretty cheap instrument. So, if you have a Giwa PP3, contact me. I want to talk with you about it. Anyway, this is my uh, review. 
so it's not a review because I don't have here the instrument. This is my opinion, my thoughts about the new Yamaha, which are, you know, are uh, upgrading their instruments significant, significantly. So if you are a Yamaha fanboy, go with Yamaha. I hope the new action is better. I guess it's better. The GHS is horrible action. Unless you are very, very beginner and you are playing not more than half an hour a day in, uh, you know, one session I'm talking. Uh, because it's not good for your uh, health of the hand, the, the GHS. I hope the GHC is better action. I guess it is so. I guess Yamaha themselves, there, there are some people there that playing the piano a lot and they know. what is doing to the end, what, it, what their instrument doing to the end, so it's problematic, let's say, let's see. But uh, this was a video, and I'm not doing a lot of videos about uh, reviewing or talking about uh, digital instruments, so you can contact me personally, I will leave my Facebook, and uh, you can contact me through Facebook, And ask me before you are buying, because this is a pretty big, uh, bi I don't know if to say big, it's an important decision to go with the right instrument. So, you can save the call and just buy uh, Kawaii. But anyway, if you have uh, particular needs, you know, like uh, things that you want to consult with me, I'm very... informative with this uh, with this uh, industry and I know my shit let's say I, I did the work to know the to know what's going on here and uh, I tried this instrument myself I had most of them and there isn't any new progression on this uh, industry lately not something meaningful. for me to do videos, so lately I'm uploading my music videos more than uh, these uh, reviews and talking videos. But uh, I know that most of my viewers are here for these videos, uh, the reviewing of pianos and less for my music, so here and there I'm doing this video, so I hope you enjoy it. And um, I will put my... Uh, I will put my uh, uh, playlist of uh, piano pieces on the, on the description down, so you will, uh, it will help me if you go and listen. If you, most of the people that are uh, registered to my channels are, uh, you know, uh, piano enthusiastic like me, I guess. So let's listen. Go and listen to my music. It will help me. And most of the... informative, let's say, uh, videos that I will do lately uh, will be on the topic how to create piano piece and how to upload it to Spotify and the, the process. I did some videos on this, but the, the process of becoming a pianist, even in the beginning of the way, how do you create music, how you upload, how you master it, With free, with free tools, not expensive tools, even for a beginner. What you will need is a decent piano and a computer, of course. Thank you for being with me. And now I will continue because now I'm on BandLab. I'm not on uh, YouTube. This is record. I'm recording this for YouTube. I'm doing uh, live shows sometimes on BandLab. And this is the story. But anyway, uh, anyway, uh, thank you. And um, if you are here on Band Lab now, I will continue and will do my uh, regular piano show. But uh, I record this for YouTube, for my YouTube channel, which is uh, mainly uh, reviewing digital piano. I started it. It like this, so I wanted to inform my friends on YouTube what is my opinion about the new Yamaha pianos. Thank you and 
by by on YouTube. And by the way, I will put a link for YouTube to my user and the, the band lab show so you can uh, see my full shows on the band lab. Because this is the way I like to do my shows here. Because on YouTube, uh, I'm keeping on YouTube for the, not the fun part of just playing, or, and, but the things that I want to keep forever, let's say. Because on BandLab, it's a live, and when I'm gone, the live is gone, and it's not keeping the videos there. So it's just for my fun and for my creation and the things like that. And so bye-bye YouTube and uh, let's go on uh, Ben Lab. 